What's going on guys and welcome on in. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this season three, the last season of RTA tier list, more specifically a drafting priority order list for legend and high champion. All right. So if your unit's not on here, guys, please don't be offended. Like I said, it's just for RTA and it's a community made list where I talked with a lot of high ranking players that sort of, we kind of all came to an agreement and we're happy where it's at. Now, I'm going to bring on my buddy Mevlin TV in just a second, and we're going to go over all the tiers, kind of just give, um, he's going to give his thoughts on each row. We won't go ev over every single unit. That would take too long. Maybe in another video, guys. And for my new players, when you're watching, um, don't worry, I got guides coming out for y'all as we speak, more uh, beginner-friendly guides. But go ahead and watch this, and you can sort of see, if you plan to play RTA later, you can see sort of the safe investments that a lot of the high-ranking players are using. A lot of red, green, blue stuff, the most we've ever seen alongside ml5s all right good stuff uh, my end game players let me know if you agree disagree a lot of stuff in the middle especially in the uh second third and fourth tier you can kind of move them up one down one i'll mention it again later in the video and you know it's really just preference at that point but overall i think we're pretty happy where everything uh kind of lands so anyways let me know if you have any uh different thoughts on it and i hope you enjoy let's get on with the video all right, guys, I got Mr. Mevlin TV with us today, and we're finally releasing our long-awaited RTA tier list. It's Mevlin, been like weeks, dude. It, it has been weeks. How it long has the season been out? Uh, I'm not even sure. Like, is it a maybe, month? Maybe close to a All month. Right. So close we've had month? some time to kind of feel it out. Mevlin is currently sitting in Legend, and today we're going to go over... We're not going to go over every single hero, but we're going to go through each tier, and then Mev and I will share our thoughts and kind of review the whole thing. So Mev, how are you doing today? Pretty good, pretty good. All right, you ready to go through these units? Yep, yep, so excited. All right, man, let's get to it. And by the way, guys, all of Mevlin's info will be below, will be posted below in the description. And also, apparently, he has some stuff to say about Bazaar and even has a video on it. But let's start with the pre-ban, highest contested row. Mev, number I think one. All these, all these are pretty, pretty self-explanatory, right? All these zeros are broken. Everyone knows that you want to pre-ban these zeros if you can't deal with them. Yep. But I kind of want to talk about Flitica a bit. I feel like... um. Flicka's dropping off. I think the reason why we pre-ban Flitica most of the times is that uh, we think that most players' fastest unit is Flitica. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yep. That's why I buy Flitica, because I think everyone else has the, the fastest unit is Flitica. But with so many like speed contesters, like Water Tanny popping off, um, I'm not sure if Flitica is like, the fastest unit in people's roster now, and I might consider pre-banning someone else that, rather than Flitica. Sure, and then we would maybe, maybe move her down. The thing is, mm -hmm. she could be put here in the cleave tier, but a lot of she players say she still uses like control comps and things like that. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. also what I want to say that um, she's there because she's not just cleave. If you're countering cleave, actually, if you want to pre-ban for cleave, it's better to pre-ban C-Dom. Because if you're pre-banning Flitica and they have triple, like they have three speed contesters, your pre-ban is useless, right? Because yeah. they're just going to use the other two speed contesters. But if you pre-ban their C-Dom, you... every time I pre-ban their C-Dom, most cleavers will instantly stop cleaving you. And they'd go like something they're not comfortable with, maybe like a bruiser comp or uh, yeah, they'd, they'd go another style and not cleave you anymore. Interesting, good point. And speaking of water tenny, uh, fairy tale tenebri, that's who you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm Ev, we're tenny. talking right before this, but we would probably plop her down right in the middle somewhere still, maybe in between the always solid and the situational mm -hmm. pick, right? Because she's very, very good. She can take over matches. But you, yeah. you made an interesting point with Bazaar. You want to talk about that real quick? Yeah, um, I feel like Bazaar just, he's a really strong unit. I feel like I, I always first pick my Bazaar. And when I tried to make my Bazaar video, he was banned more than half of the time. Either he was pre-banned or post-banned. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think that he's really strong in forcing your opponent to do things. And he he's like he's like Flitica. He opens up Cleave and he opens up Control as well. And you can still go Bruiser if you really want to, because, you know, unbuffable, really good into Bruiser comps, right? Even if you are going Bruiser, your opponent might still go Bruiser. Unbuffable, really strong. He's just a really good all-rounder. And, um, yeah, I think he's underrated. Um, people think that he gets countered by Euphine now, but, like, you can see my video, like, I let Euphine through, and it really doesn't matter. He's still he's still a really solid pick. Nice, we'll check that out. So, Mevlin was saying, we Bizarre, in his opinion, should be put in the... Could probably be easily in this always solid tier. Same with mm -hmm. F10. But for now, yeah. we'll probably put them both here in the situational pick since it depends on the play style. Depends just in terms of how often they get picked. They're probably somewhere here in the middle. Yeah, I think I'm I'm the only one who plays Basar like constantly first pick Basar. Like so always pick, right? Not just like mm -hmm. a, when your opponent has some buffs you want to remove. No. Okay. So let's move on to the first pick row. Mm -hmm. Any, uh, uh, what do you think about this row right here? The next of the most oppressive. 
Emo Ball, dude. I feel like I would argue he's higher even. He should go up. So last time we talked, guys, we're, like we said, we've been trying to release this video every now and then. Sage <laughs> he's Ball been going up <laughs> He's been going up. I could agree. How often do you see him get pre-banned in Legend? Does it uh... depend on the player? Well, I don't have them, so they don't pre-ban against me. Right. And um, I have counters for him, so I don't pre-ban them. But he's sort of like in the same uh, same light as Wartani in that, like, even if you counter him, a good player who knows how to play Sage Ball correctly can outplay you easily. And it's really hard to like, there's nothing you do you can do. It's like, if he props his, uh, if he props his S1 over and over and over again, that's, is that like 75%, I think? I think yes, that sounds like 75%. If he mm -hmm. procs it over and over again, there's nothing he could have done most of the time. And yeah, um, he's, he just gets he's just really impressive. Yeah, he gets so much momentum. That's that's a problem with his ball. And you don't want to hit him because uh, he'll one-shot you if you, if you don't kill him. And like, you know. Yeah, he is just super solid. He also fits in like a ton of comps, right? As long as your speed tuning's on point. Yeah, he's yeah. You, you can even cleave with him if you, you could cleave with him if you want to. <laughs> but I think the fact that like you, you you said you have a lot of answers, you don't see him. It might be because you don't have him. But I think right now yeah, it's okay um, in the first pick. But definitely yeah, could yeah. be contested up here in the in the top row everything else look good to you though tywin mm -hmm. haste i think uh i think if when most people more people like build their sage ball it's gonna go higher yeah. or like if you get rerun right if we get rerun of sage ball Which, and more yeah, people get think, sage ball. i do think he'll be one of the next Gary. yeah um, everyone else um yeah, everything else, yeah everything's pretty good okay cool cool uh next we have the always solid row your second or third mm -hmm. picks hmm La landy's pretty good i want to yeah i just want to talk about landy actually <laughs> ravi man ravi Ravi is so oppressive right now. Um, yes. most people, most people will just like pre like would would pick Cerise into Landy. Like I think that's the only counter. I think he say too. You mean into Ravi? Pick into Ravi, Ravi, yeah. But but most people just pre ban Ravi. I mean, uh, sorry, most people who play Ravi would pre ban Cerise. Pre ban Cerise, true. Yep. And then you just and then you're like what SSB? SSB and Kise, but like those are SSB is so easy to counter. Kise Kise is also easy to counter. Just outspeed Kise. So like all the units that counter her. You could just work around it. And, and then Dizzy, um, too, a little bit, right? Yeah, Dizzy a little, too. Yeah. Um, but I agree. She's very strong. Um, she's I think what so something might strong. come up a lot with is her and... Where do you think a Ravi goes? A I, think she, I think she belongs here, too. I think she, yeah, she belongs there. Um, I've been playing her a lot more now. Now that people, like... I've seen the light. <laughs> I've seen the light of a Ravi. Uh, mm -hmm. she's, she's definitely do solid, you, but... You also run her with the Raz? No. Nah, no, nah, I just I just usually, like, run her by self. If, okay, like, okay. there's a, there's a squishy target on the opposite side. Yeah, to like second one shot it, but um, yeah, she's all right. Um, Landy though, Landy's a beast. Yeah, Landy's a monster. Um, you not think she not should be first pick yet or no? Nah, not yet. Well, maybe actually, she's just a safe pick, right? If I pick Landy, like there's no there's no hard counter to Landy. You could like out like you could try Flurry and Ross, but if she has Guiding Light, right? Yeah, the the, the real answer is like besides. Yeah, because the guiding light, the real answer is just picking multiple fire units and then you're setting yourself up. Because if you first for, pick Landy, for water, yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. Good point. If I first pick Landy, you, you go fire, I could just go water. And then, like, now now you're kind of screwed, right? So yeah. I think first picking Landy could be a pretty solid. Uh, I'm going to try it sometime, actually. Yeah, now I think that so I think too. But it. maybe for now, we leave her here because the rest are, these are like very highly, highly contested. These are strong, yeah, highly yes, contested. Tried and true. Anyone else on this yeah. list you think you want to comment on or everything else looks good? Everything looks good, yeah. Oh, um, Luluka. Do we think Luluka still belongs here? I've been oh, hearing she's been nah. falling off a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Luluka's been falling off. This one's especially been crazy. Because uh, the meta is like super fast now. Everyone's got like 270, 280 speed. Like almost everybody has that much speed on their speed contesters. Mm. And Luluka just crumbles when she gets speed contested. Doesn't matter who speed contests her. Anyone that speed contests her can easily like just stop Luluka in her tracks. Yeah, you have all the... Uh, Cerise's, the F10E's running around, all of them kind of just yeah. destroy her. Okay, so maybe yep. she moves down here into the situation. Yeah, there. I think she does move there. It was a little bad, but she was a tear in season two, and now it's just falling off a little yeah. bit for now. We'll see where she it was, actually ends in up. Season two, it was a slow meta, so she always like took first turn, go stealth there and everything. Go. So now, now she can't do that anymore, sadly. All right, so that's good for the always solid tier. Next up, the biggest row. The situation, the situation one. one. Yes. Situation. All right, I already talked about Basara, but I kind of want to talk about LQC as well. Oh, please tell I, us. Yeah, I love LQC. I don't think she's situational, man. You can first speak LQC. Like people say that she she only counters teams with dark units. Mm -hmm. That's like ninety five percent of the teams in high level RTA. Right. You can't you, you can't not draft dark units. Like if I first speak LQC and you don't draft dark units, I already won. That's that's a win for me. If you don't draft dark units, I don't mind. If that's if she stops you. 
she so stops you. The earlier you pick her, she's going to force your opponent to avoid picking Dark Heels, which is kind of like a strength in itself, right? Yeah, it's a strength in itself. If you, if she stops you from drafting the your best units, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. So, Mev, real quick, let me tell let me tell the people watching. I'm probably explaining it in the intro after we finish this, but so this tier list was made from our communities. Kind of just I just gauged the high champ to legend players. We sort of all came to a conclusion. Of course, everyone mm -hmm. has their different. Anything can be moved around a little bit depending on your play style. But um, I think for these three rows, especially the three middle rows. A lot of these units can be moved up and down one, and everything yeah. still like fits perfectly, right? So yeah, I agree. Medford, it's all about for, the playstyle and your yeah. experience and your characters. And so for Mevlin, for example, he would put Bazaar and LQC up here because he has a lot of experience with them, and for his playstyle, apparently they've been working mm -hmm. really well. So for him, LQC up in the always solid. But I think a lot of players still consider her, you know, very solid. Middle is very good. These are all super Middle's good, very units, good right? So, I just, I just want, I just want to like clarify that she's yeah, not I like, that. I like that too. counter unit. Mm -hmm. She's not a counter unit. She doesn't. She's, she's a unit. Period. And so, Mev, if people want to see your LQC and Bazaar, you have a Bazaar video, but for LQC, where, where do they, how are they going to find that? Stuff? Uh, I have a video for LQC, but it's an old one. I might make a new one for RTA specifically. I made one for Guild Wars, so it is all on my channel. Okay. If you guys want to check that out? Yeah, we'll put the info. All right, Mev, anyone else in this list we need to? So, we talked about Bazaar, LQC, mm -hmm. everything uh, else. What about Ruel? Does she still belong here? I don't, I don't even know, Ruel, man. Right? Yeah, I don't know either. I feel like the no only, the no only one picks her, but. The only role I lost to was Codes because it had like hella ER. I could not yeah. control his uh, Ruel, but that was Codes Ruel. Nobody has Codes Ruel aside from Codes. So, do you still pe do? You, are people picking her and you're just winning, or do you just don't even really see her that often? I don't even see her. That's what That's I'm thinking I, like, too. But I think since it's Ruel and we're not for sure, for sure yet, just give her some respect because, like you said, like mm -hmm. Codes, for example, other people that might try it. I think with her kit, you just need the right type of gear. She's definitely not as good as season two, but. Maybe we leave her here for now. Maybe we could put her down one. She's just been right. kind of falling off. Like, no one plays her. And so everyone else we're good with? Uh, I kind of want to talk about Charlotte real quick. Sure, I think Charlotte's going yeah. to be really strong in the future meta. Because uh, I think once we get Cerise rerun, we're going to see so many Guiding Lights. Oh, and good point. Uh, Fire Charlotte is really good into stealthing us because she has AoE all the time. So Also nice think versus of, the Landy pick you talked about earlier. Landy, yeah, versus the Landy picks. And... um. Yeah, Guiding Light and uh, Asteni too. Like, she could be really good into those units. Mm -hmm. And she also takes gear that none of, none of your other units want. And she yeah, also doesn't yeah, have too exactly. many molas, which is really good. She doesn't need crit. And she goes, she could, does she counter DN? I don't know how the crit, uh, the crit mechanics work in the, in terms of like, you know, how her S1 and S3 always crits, but yeah. DN lowers crit. I haven't. I don't know how that works. Sure. Guys, if yeah, you know, I'm not sure either. let us know in the comments below. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's go. Fire Charlotte coming up soon. Yeah, I've been saying, I think everyone should try to invest in her soon. More, she's already good now, but Mev's saying in the future, very soon with the Guiding Light rerun, might be even more relevant. But a lot of players respect her, so she's here in the middle. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're Absolutely. good with this role, Mev? Yeah, yeah, we're good. That's right. Okay, next one. Situational pick Yo, off Yo, Kisei, man. Kisei's yes. higher. Kisei, you yeah. think maybe up one? Yeah, she's so, so good she, right what now. What does she answer right now? Yeah, where have you been picking her? Uh, into Ravi's anything that's slow. So Kisei's strength, she's mm -hmm. sort of like Tomoka, where um, if she takes turn one, she could go, she can hide and just pop off from there, yep. right? She's kind of like Tomoka, but way more damage, insane amount of damage. Her damage is crazy. I, mm -hmm. I was so surprised, like how much damage she can do without attack buff. By the way, like she's so just anything insane. slower, more bruisers, and you 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 pick in the uh, ice Kisei. Yeah, yeah. Are you running like a cinder right? party bruisers? Um, no, I'm running a basket right now, but I'm, I'm playing around on different different builds because uh, I don't know, I, have, I don't have like a, a comp for her yet, so I'm not 100% sure. All right, so guys, Med would put her up here. Very good. Better than Tomoka for this meta, at least, this season. I think so, yeah. Um, anyone else in this off meta, the situational pick row? Mm, no, I think everything's everything pretty good. I guess uh, Persea is going to... Yes. Gonna get above, so let's give I'm, our brief thoughts guys don't worry we're not gonna go too far yeah we're not gonna go too about the, uh, talk but Mev, talk to us about bracera changes you think it's i'm 100 sure yeah. yeah she has to go up being a Charon, like there's gonna be any, any unit that's gonna have multiple builds and bracera is gonna be one of them you can either go like the effectiveness fast bracera mm -hmm. or you could go like a Charon build bracera like kind of slow ish high damage there's just gonna be so many so many builds on her and um the counter like actually that. might be a thing now too it's counter like, bracera, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But just the, yeah, there's like so even just the reliability, right, on the hundred percent now. So people using oh, yeah, her already, well, yeah. just it'll be even more reliable, which is just. I mean, good. you know my thoughts on Basar, so Basar is just another Basar now. True, yeah. Moving up, we'll see. Yeah. All right, so that's it for that row. Counter pick row. 
I think uh, some of these might. Mev, I'll go ahead and lead this one. Fighter Maya. Fighter I Maya. I think she's been popping up more and more often as not just a counter pick, right? Maybe I more agree. so, not purely um, like always pick, but anytime any dark units are on the field, um, like more value to her. So, right? I think maybe I think we could probably bring her up to maybe even here for now this season, but definitely could yeah. go up a few rows. I think uh, that she also counters AoE, like Elbers F Maya. Oh, of course. Yeah, AoE and, really? and counter were her already a thing. But what I was trying mm -hmm. to mention is that now, like, any, even without control or AoE, like, anytime you see just uh, darkiness where she can kind of bully around, you can mm -hmm. use her as, like, an always pick. So, but yeah, of I know, course, there's just AoE a fight where, like, why are you bringing F Maya? And then you realize, oh, it just one shots me with S3. That's why he brought F Maya. Yeah, I've seen her work versus, like, full bruisers, full knights, even. So I yeah. think if you build yeah. around her, you have good gear. She should probably be moved out of this counter pick row, but I think it's still, we'll probably put her here for now. Just one up, up one row, but yeah, she's one I've been seeing a lot lately and a lot of people are having success, so build her up. Um, anyone else have in this row that you think maybe- Is, is Momo still so relevant? I don't know, I, I think Momo fell off uh, completely. Yeah, so is it time we take her off the entire board? I think so, she just, you don't really, there's two, there's so many better anti-control units. Like we yeah, said, so Fmaya, CZ. Um, it's better to bring those units than build ER. Right. So guys, Momo can still work and she's still a very good counter pick option versus control. However, if Mevlin is saying he doesn't really see her that often in Legend, this tier list isn't really a power level list. It's more like the the play rate percentage of how often you see these units and, and the order they're drafted in, right? So if Mev's saying he doesn't see Momo that often, we might want to maybe take her off the list for now just as a potential... You know, as a counter, yeah, but yeah. guys, as a free-to-play unit, everyone else should be building her. You should have one ready. Actually, so. um, I see Akadis more than uh. Yeah, than that's Momo. actually true. Let's see if we can. I've been hearing a lot of Akadis plus champs. A lot of just Akadis in general as a um, good, yeah. good healer, right? Do you think she's kind of taking mm -hmm. her spot in this this meta? I think so. Yeah, Akadis is just a better healer, and um, even even though she has lower ER than Momo, um, the fact that she heals every turn. Yeah, I agree. And, and a lot of people have her already geared for Guild Wars. You just probably need some more ER, right? If you want to run her in RTA. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, just a little bit more ER. Yep. Right, I like that idea. So Momo, guys, maybe will be taken down. Remember, I'll edit in the, the F10E right here. But Akadis, we brought her down from this list. And we'll talk. We'll, we'll mention this bottom row, or this bottom pool of all units in just a sec. All right, man, I'm almost done. Cleave tier. This is just, it is what Cleaved it is, right? Cleaved tier. Yeah. Just cleave tier. Not, Not much, much to say. About. They're the cleavers. They're very good. Yeah. Speed imprint row, the last one. Um, yeah, same yeah thing, right? all speed yeah. imprints. The one thing I'll I say though, guys, they're gonna, they're gonna Go release. Ahead. They're not releasing any more speed imprints. It seems like ever. True. Yeah. I wonder if that's, uh, that's something they're scared of doing or releasing Intended. more speed imprints. It might be. Um, keep in mind, guys. So I wanted to talk about this giant pool. Remember, like I said, this isn't a power level t list. So if your favorite unit gets left out here, it doesn't mean they're bad. It's just at highest legend and high champ. You don't really see a lot of these units picked very often. And if you're noticing Ruzid is missing from here, who else? Helga, things like that. Okay, yeah, they're yeah, not really because easy the cleave tier unit, or the cleavers, when they try to get speed imprints, or anyone trying to contest with speed imprints, you want your mm -hmm. speed imprint to still, you know, be relevant and do something beyond just boosting. So you yeah. try to pick these before you pick like Ruzid. You never see those other style units. So if they're not, if they're not on the list, they're not really used in the highest levels of play. Agreed. All right, Mev. Um, any closing thoughts, man? I think we we kind of covered it all pretty quickly. We're finally gonna get this out. <laughs> yeah, finally. Um, no, I think that's about it. Um, like I said, guiding light. When series comes up, when the series run comes up, I think things are gonna move around a little bit. Predictions, yeah. Guiding light plus you said the Charlotte thing. Um, Charlotte thing, yeah. Like yeah once um, once more people have more guiding lights, it's gonna be interesting. How that's very true. Can, you and yeah. I are both missing guiding light, right? And a lot of players, yeah, we're both I think. People. Everyone's going to be able to get one now with powder. So, guys, you've been watching my other mm -hmm. videos. Save your bookmarks. Save your powder. It's going to be, sh should be coming out February. But we'll we'll uh, we'll stay tuned. And even, even those people who oh, yeah. have Guiding Light will have more Guiding Lights. <laughs> like multiple units with Guiding That's Light. That's right, too, because Guiding Light's one, Mev. Are you going to be pulling, trying to pull for multiple copies? It's one that scales yeah, really man. hard because of the RNG. You really want yeah, gonna, as high as possible. <laughs> I'm not yeah, looking I'm forward get to that. Two in. I'm scared. Oh, man. All right. Well, guys, Mev's, all of Mev's info will be on below. Mev, thank you for joining me and helping me out with this. You might see me on Mev's channel, too. We're working on we're working together on some stuff. And, um, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.